Today on Forbes, a $250 million plan to pull lithium for batteries from the Great Salt Lake. The U.S. could become a major supplier of lithium for batteries in the next few years after the Trump administration took a stake in the developer of a massive mine in Nevada. But Silicon Valley startup Lilac Solutions thinks it's got a better idea that avoids the higher costs and environmental harms of traditional mining. Extract the pricey mineral from briny water at oil fields and sites like the Great Salt Lake in Utah instead of digging it out of the ground. Oakland-based Lilac, which has been refining its patented ion exchange technology for lithium extraction since its founding nearly a decade ago, is raising $250 million to build its first commercial processing facility at the Great Salt Lake that could produce 5,000 metric tons of lithium per year by 2028. If all goes well, that's just the start, as the company looks to help energy companies pull lithium out of massive underground brine deposits that are often a byproduct of active oil and gas fields across the U.S., such as the Smackover Formation, the remnant of an ancient sea that stretches from Texas to Florida, according to CEO Rafe Sully. Sully told Forbes that compared to the amount of lithium that can be pulled from conventional mines, quote, brine is probably orders of magnitude larger. Brine projects in the Smackover region that companies such as Standard Lithium, ExxonMobil, and Chevron are developing promise to yield hundreds of thousands of tons of lithium annually. The U.S. Geological Survey estimated in a study last year there could be up to 19 million tons of lithium in the Smackover in Arkansas alone. USGS hydrologist Catherine Neerum, the study's principal researcher, said, quote, We estimate there is enough dissolved lithium present in that region to replace U.S. imports of lithium and more. Despite the Trump administration's dramatic reversal of federal efforts to curb climate change, including killing incentives for electric vehicle purchases, demand for lithium for batteries is on the rise. Globally, the lithium market was worth an estimated $28 billion last year, and demand could increase 26% to nearly 1.5 million tons this year, according to Mining.com. That's driven mainly by growing EV sales, the top battery user representing over 75% of all lithium use, as well as energy storage. And though U.S. EV sales aren't rising as fast as in China and Europe, demand for batteries for energy storage by utilities is exploding as they seek to hang on to surplus power from large-scale solar and wind farms. Most of the lithium used in the U.S. originates in Chile and Argentina, but it is processed and refined in China. The need to create a stable domestic supply is why Energy Secretary Chris Wright said the government agreed last month to take a 5% stake in Lithium Americas Corp., the Vancouver-based developer of the Thacker Pass mine in Nevada, in addition to a shared 5% stake with General Motors. When it becomes fully operational later in the decade, Thacker Pass is expected to produce about 40,000 tons of battery-grade lithium a year. For similar reasons, the Trump administration in July took a $400 million stake in MP Materials, operator of the only U.S. mine supplying rare earth minerals needed for electric motor magnets. While the Thacker Pass mine contains a massive amount of lithium, its development has faced years of fierce opposition from tribal groups in the area and environmentalists. The project is a sprawling open pit mine, spanning nearly 18,000 acres, with an on-site sulfuric acid plant to process raw ore into commercial-grade lithium. It's also expected to consume 1.7 billion gallons of water a year in an arid part of the U.S. Southwest that's seeing worsening droughts as a result of climate change. By contrast, direct lithium extraction from brine is essentially a matter of pumping liquid through a processing facility and then sending it back where it came from. Sully of Lilac Solutions said, quote, it's a much smaller environmental footprint. You're not leaving a huge open cut mine behind. You're pulling brine out of the ground, and then after it's finished, brine is going back into the ground. So you're not really disturbing the water table. It's much, much smaller in terms of land usage and environmental impact. For full coverage, check out Alan Ownsman's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.